everyone. Thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary. Your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning back in to the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. Um, I'm so, so appreciative of you guys' continued support of what we're doing here, the community that we're building. If you're not following us on Instagram already, make sure you do at victory over circumstance. Simple. And then, of course, if you're listening, make sure you check out our YouTube. Um, it's going to be on my page, Mom AJ. And um, just typing victory over circumstance in the search box, and you will find all of the episodes on there as well. So you can watch it and you can listen on Spotify, Anchor, um, Apple Podcasts, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. So thank you, as always, for your support. You can even support us by donating to the cause on Anchor. Yeah, find the button and just, you know, support. Any dollar amount helps us to continue production and get better and better and better and bigger and bigger. And then when COVID stops, we can get a studio, y'all, a whole studio. So yes, I really appreciate you guys' support and listenership. Today, we have my good friend, Malia Papillon. I'm here. With us. So excited. (laughs) Malia, Malia. Malia and I met... Um, like in what, 2018, 2017? Yeah, probably like 2017. 2017. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's been some time actually. Exactly. And then um, <laughs> it was a few birthdays. You know what I'm saying? We've had a few birthdays together. And um, I'm so blessed, first of all, to have had such amazing like group of friends who are all doing just amazing things. And that's why, because I'm like every single person that I've had, has been a really good friend, but like, I'm not just putting my friends on here, guys. Like these are people that have whole amazing careers, whole amazing stories that deserve to be told. And of course I'm asking y'all to come because Mm -hmm. I know you and I already know what you have to bring to the table and I already know what you have to like present to the world. So like, but y'all are actually amazing as people. Thank you. So I just want to get into your story. Thank like, you. Well, first of all, we met 20, 2017 yep. after our pageant. I did Miss USA. I was Miss Maryland USA yes. 2015. Yes. You were Miss Louisiana, Louisiana 20, 16. 2016. 2016. Mm-hmm. So the year after. The year after. Exactly. And then we met the year after yeah, randomly, right? Yeah, through a mutual friend Through a mutual New friend York. in New York. Yeah, and kind of fell world. in love. And we're yeah, because like, oh we're, we're born two days apart. She's a little bit older, yes. but we always celebrate our birthday together. October 16th, yeah. October 18th. 18th. And, and she has bir- my mom's birthday, which See? is crazy. <laughs> That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So I just always felt your energy and like, you're just such a warm spirit. You're such a like, Thank you. a beautiful, wise spirit mm-hmm. at that. Like young, but wise. You feel me? <laughs> And so I always felt like um, our age never mattered yeah, or anything exactly. like that. It's like you are, yeah. your head is on straight. And I really admire that about you. Thank so I kind of just want to get into it. Like, cool. where does that wisdom come from for mm-hmm. you? How Ooh, did that start? That's that's an interesting question. Right? Um, I don't know. I think it just depends on, like, really how you were raised. Luckily, I just always had a really great example of, like, um parents who work hard and who are like very sure of themselves so I didn't really like grow up like searching for any type of identity and so when you are like raised by strong people you grow up like with a strong conviction of who you are and so no matter what happens in my life even though things get crazy I'm never like confused about who I am Mm. you know because I know that anything that I want I can have it I know that I'm supposed to you know, live the life that I want. Amen. Um, you are supposed to live the life that you yeah, want. Yeah, so yes. I guess that's where the wisdom comes from. Um, thank God for my parents, you so know, you would and say it would my come family. For your parents yeah, and my and family, family for sure. So what is that like, your your parents like growing up? Um, 
what was your childhood like then? Yeah. Like, how did it all compound to this understanding of I'm supposed to live a life of beauty and luxury. <laughs> I deserve it and I shall have it and I can just will it in. Yeah. Like, what was the childhood and, and into adulthood that mm-hmm. provided this understanding for you? Right. Um, well, my parents were separated when I was growing up and they raised me in separate environments, really. Mm-hmm. But... I was also raised as an only child, so I guess by nature of being an only child, like, when you want something, you get it. But they never gave it to me in a way to, like, spoil me. Like, they kind of always made me work for it. Mm -hmm. So I learned, like, if I sweep the leaves, like, I could get 25 cents or, like, Mm -hmm. you know, I could, like, rack up my chores to, like, get what I wanted. So I guess that really taught me that, like, no matter what you want, you can get it. You just have to work for it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So it just went, it just evolved from just like, just, just, I guess they were just good at teaching you. They were very those, good like, at lessons. teaching me like the basic lessons mm-hmm. and being good examples. And then like, as I grew older, I just incorporated that into the way that I lived. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they really led by example through their lives. And you say your parents weren't together. So how was that like with like living in those different environments? Cause I can yeah. imagine your dad having a totally different set of rules. Yeah. Your mom having a totally different set of rules. Yeah. And of course, um, well, I personally know that mm-hmm. your mother was a young mother. Mm-hmm. So like, what was that also? Yeah. All, like two different environments with your mother having, being raising you young. Right. It was definitely chaotic. I think that's where your wisdom comes from too, yeah, right? Yeah, like, definitely. I never really got a chance to like be a child, you know, mm-hmm. because I was birthed to children, mm-hmm. really. So, like, we all raised each other. Mm. And, like, even to this day, I feel like me and my mom switch roles sometimes, Mm. you know? Um, Yeah, I mean, it was chaotic. It definitely wasn't fun. Like, I was having to go, you know, back and forth to, like, each person's house, depending on how many days the court said I had to go. Mm. So, it wasn't fun, but I really just grew up fast. And I didn't mind being an only child because it really got me to come up with creative ways to like keep myself occupied Mm -hmm. so I ended up being like a really creative child like I taught myself how to do a lot um yeah so I feel like in that situation like it depends on your mindset and for whatever reason even as a young child I knew that if you know my reality on the outside didn't match my reality on the inside like one day it will Mm, yeah and you could create it exactly and you could create it yeah did you have like a strong sense of i mean it sounds like you had a very strong sense of self Mm -hmm. early on i did like for some like whatever reason that was i really mm, did are you just super connected to your inner higher self Mm -hmm. or is it that like obviously your circumstances made you have to like get that strong sense of self yeah. early because you like you said you and your mom are literally raising each other at points yeah which is real because like a lot of parents will say like i needed that child to teach me how to do this or teach me how to do this and that's the thing that a lot of people like we forget we're all spirit before mm-hmm. we're born into this world right and we still are those spirit when we're born here right. i might be a spirit that is a hundred you know old yeah. an old spirit in yeah. a three-year-old body right and you my nephew was the same way he was he yeah he just had a yeah he would he my i think a, a family yes. member of mine passed away and my my nephew went to my aunt was like it's okay it's okay auntie mm-hmm. he's just gone mm-hmm. to the other side but he'll be back mm-hmm. and da-da. and she was like what right you are three years old telling right. me right and she was like, wow. Like, yeah, it made that her was tear up. Me. Yeah. You feel me? Because it's like, yeah. he just had this different understanding. That was definitely me. I can remember when my grandfather passed away when I was, we had a lot of death in the family when I was really young, but I can remember he was like, I was five and he was in the 70s. So he was like fairly young. Mm. Um, and he died of um, lung cancer. And mm. I can remember like going up to my grandma and telling her like, it's okay. Just like look at the Aww. silver lining, and she was like, "What?" <laughs> What's this little child telling me? I saw me? like silver lining in like Stuart Little, like the movie, uh-huh. and they were talking about the silver lining. So I told her like, "Look at the silver lining. Like at least he's not sick anymore." Aww. And so that was like a really like 
crazy moment for her. And she's like, look, what is yeah. child telling me? Look at the silver line. What, what have you been through? Exactly. And what do you know? But right. at the same time, it's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When you know. Yeah, and you like, just know. these children, you know, were, were gifted because yeah. you're also untainted from the world and mm-hmm. all these other things. And you're really able to just operate in that spirit. Yeah. So listen to kids, y'all. Like, don't think I know. that. You know what I mean? Kids know what's up. I read this book called uh, Celestine Prophecy. Yes. And um, it one of the chapters in there is so deep. Like, mm-hmm. if you haven't read this book before, I recommend reading yes. it. I think it's by James Redfield. And it was one of the books that kind of, like, I feel like open to me universal truths mm-hmm. in such a way that, like, if you're not a person that believes in all of this new age stuff air quotes Mm -hmm. (laughs) then you know you're kind of like whatever but at the same time like it it made it palatable for everybody to understand what he's saying wrapped up in a in a um wrapped up in like a story about an adventure a man going on an adventure right right. and like one of the one of the chapters in there was talking about how like children um Mm. What's it called? Our our regular mm-hmm. people. They you are. just have to speak to them. They are at their level exactly, and just you know explain to them then, but don't lie to them yes. because that's just our adult egos yes. trying to like make ourselves feel big. Yes, you know. Yes, by lying to them, but like don't lie to them and don't make things up. Just just yeah, come down to their level, but they understand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you always have to remember that there's, like, that inner child in you, and, like, your inner self always knows, and so, I don't know, I guess, like, from an early age, I've just always been in touch with, like, who I am, so I've always known, you know, like, I've always known what direction I was going Mm. in, I've always known what I've wanted, Mm. so if there's ever a time in my adult life that I don't know where I'm going, which is not often never really Mm -hmm. but if there Mm -hmm. ever is a time where I'm just kind of unsure I always think about like what I wanted as a child Mm -hmm. and that was just to be happy and Mm -hmm. like to be able to create an environment to to where I can like you know create my own way of working that's best for me and Mm -hmm. so whatever that translates into whatever I'm doing in my life that's what I try to remember because and you started working with children yeah was that like um was that because of this like intuition that you have, like this this strong sense of self and like knowing mm-hmm. in you? Is that what kind of drew you to working with children, or how did that happen? Not at first, no. I just got a car when I was in high school and I needed a job, so oh, really? I just started babysitting. No way. Yeah. Okay. So I started babysitting, but later on, I did actually go to college. Right. For a de- I have a degree in child psychology. Right. Um, and then. Later on, when I moved to New York, I started nannying professionally. But even before that, all throughout middle school and high school and college, I babysat. Right. And I just really liked kids. That's like so I just always really had a connection with kids. And yeah, the families that I've worked for, I've definitely been placed in their family for a reason. For a reason. Yeah. I feel like you definitely are called for that. Yeah. That's what I'm like. For you to study <laughs> child psych- psychology, mm-hmm. for you to have... Started nannying at such a young age yeah. just because you needed a job. But exactly. then, like, you see how, like, everything led you yeah, to... Yeah, it's like you already know yeah. what you're doing. Exactly. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is that... So what made you want to study child psychology in the first place? I just felt like when I was a kid, I just felt, like, really misunderstood. And I felt like no one, you know, everyone was, like, doing their own thing. When you were in college? No, when I was a child. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. When I was growing up, in my personal experience, because of what was going on with my parents, I felt like no one understood me, and like no one was like, no one really sat me down and said like, you know, how are you feeling, Malia? Like, if you're feeling this way, let's do this to help you, f- you know, figure out why you're feeling that way and work through it. And so I guess that is why I'm so independent now is because you have to figure it out yeah i just had to i you know i had to boss up and do it myself so i have to like assert a certain level of patience when i'm dealing with people who didn't grow up that way because it's like you see people doing the same cycles and you want to just like shake them especially if you love them and you know let them know you don't have to do that that way but not everybody grew up like me and not everybody had the experiences that i had to force me to figure things out so that's why I became interested in studying that is because I wanted to understand children and 
ultimately be able to like help them sort through their problems and at least give them tools to like know that they're not alone and that they don't have to feel you know misunderstood, misunderstood. even if their environments are chaotic why why did you specifically feel misunderstood though in your experience i just feel like when you're a kid People think, like, kids don't know what they want, you know? People think that kids kind of don't matter. Like, you can just tell kids what you want them to do, and, like, they'll go with the flow. So I felt like I was misunderstood because because of what was going on. Like, I did have to go between two environments, two homes, like, every other week. That was a lot. And, like, one holiday you get your parent, your mom's house, and then the next holiday you get your dad's house. And, like, you don't you have, have to, to say. Pick. Yeah, almost. it's so weird. Yeah, and so, like, I never really had a say, and I was misunderstood in them thinking that was the best for me. Mm. Like, that was not the best for me. Ask me. me. Ask me. Yeah. So, eventually, when I was 12, I stopped going back and forth. I I finally had enough, and I was like, this is it. I'm not You told one of them, I'm not going no more. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. And so. Y'all gonna have to listen to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. That is so interesting. I know. Y'all gonna yeah. start listening to me. But I'm happy that um I was able to do that at such a young age because I've carried that mentality all the way up until now. Like you get what you want. And even even if it is your parents, you need to stand up for yourself and tell them what's good for you and what's not good for you. So that just goes to any relationship I'm in now. It doesn't matter who it is. If it's not good for me and if it's not, you know, if I feel like I'm being held back or hindered or I'm not being honored or heard or respected, like I have to speak up. So I've been doing that since forever. You have to, <laughs> like you have to. You have to, even if it is your family, it doesn't matter. You're the closest person to you, like you still deserve to be heard. Even if you are 12, like who cares? That part. So boundaries. you need to know that today, like whatever you want needs to be heard. Whatever you want needs to be heard. Speak. Yes. Up. Speak your mind. Yes. Amen. You're worth it. Amen. Like you deserve it. Amen. So I love that. Yep. So then you turn. So after college, um, what was the <laughs> journey like? Um, growing up and like moving. Your right after college, you went to college in Louisiana. Yeah. So what happened with that was college was kind of a. Um, off and on like thing for me because okay. around the same time that I was in college, like second or third year, I won Miss Louisiana. Mm-hmm. So it was really oh, okay. difficult to oh, continue to okay. keep going to college. So I actually took a semester off. Oh. And then when I picked back up, I was in New York, I was online. Mm-hmm. So I graduated college when I was actually in New York. After, and I, after Miss Louisiana. After Miss Louisiana so after the and the after Miss USA. You, after the pageant, after yes. Miss USA, mm-hmm. you went back to, you went, you moved, you decided to move to New York. Exactly. And then I was still you were like, college. let me do online. Okay, online, okay. exactly. That's, so I'd that's on, good. Yeah, I've, I've done online college before. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I kept with that and then graduated when I was in New York. And working, yeah. And so that the was whole a grind. How, yeah, what that was, the, was a big. The moving story was insane, oh. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So after Miss USA, um, my roommate at the time, she was Miss South Carolina, and we had the same management company. So sometimes with these pageants, you know, you'll have a company mm-hmm. that buys different states. Mm-hmm. So we were under that same company, and we gotten really close throughout the year, and we ended up being roommates at the pageant and then after that she moved to new york Mm. and she was like hey you're not doing anything for the summer in louisiana like come to new york i was like okay bet so i went to new york and i was like wow this place is great Mm. um so after two months i was like i don't really think i want to go back home so i didn't Ah, i just stayed i (laughs) I just stayed and i called my mom i was like hey mom you know like I'm really liking out here. (laughs) You know, I'm not coming back. Um, But by that time, I had had a agency sign me Mm -hmm. for like acting and modeling. So Mm -hmm. I wasn't just calling to say like I don't have a plan. I was like, hey, I just got signed. I think I'm going to stay. Wow. Okay, so you got signed immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, then you were great. Yeah. I mean, it was. Did you always want to do that, or did you kind of fall into that line of work as far as modeling and acting? I think I always wanted to pursue acting. Um, Modeling was just kind of something I did because. Because okay. of the pageants. Okay. But um, yeah, acting was always mm-hmm. like a on the forefront of my mind. Oh. Yeah. So after Miss USA, I think we all kind of 
have come to that realization when you do something like that. You're like, oh, TV, like, this mm-hmm. is not so bad. Like, mm-hmm. I can do this for real, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what led that. Um, she was definitely shocked, but mm-hmm. she was really supportive, thank mm-hmm. God. Um, so, yeah, from there, I found a job and tried to find an apartment and got scammed Lord. for a fake apartment on Craigslist. Lord. Go see your apartments in person. <laughs> Craigslist? <laughs> oh, my God. It was crazy, yeah. So at the Christmas, time, man. they scammed me for like almost all of my money that oh I had in my bank my account. God. It was like three grand. No. And I had enough money to pay one month's rent right. for a room that I found, um, that I actually saw in person. <laughs> with, it had some roommates, but these were random roommates. They were girls my age. It ended up working out, but after I paid that, I was pretty much broke. Oh my God, no. So I had to find a job and I had to make it work. But I remember like being on the phone with my aunt because she is, um, <laughs> she became my accountant after that because she was like, <laughs> we, we gotta help you out. <laughs> yeah. she, she's like a professional accountant, but she's mine now. She's like, we gotta, we gotta help you, sis. Aww. But she told me, you know, like this happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, why mm-hmm. not be you? Mm-hmm. This literally happens all the time. This is not a reason why you should go home. Because mm-hmm. my mom was like, oh, this is a sign. Right. You should come home. No. And I'm like, oh, maybe it is a sign. Like right. I tried to do this and I got scammed. And so no, things happen. Yeah, Bad exactly. Things happen all the time. So she really encouraged me to keep going and Good. I'm so happy I didn't give up on that because sometimes yes. I don't know if we New can curse not shit's gonna easy. happen I mean yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> shit happens listen so you can't let that you can't you let can't one let that obstacle, deter you because sometimes little thing. this is really annoying yeah. but sometimes like I feel like the universe will test you and yeah. be like how bad do you want how, it mm. so they'll send you some curveballs mm-hmm. to see if you really stay on the course mm-hmm. because if you veer off that easily then mm-hmm. like you're never gonna make it mm-hmm. you're never gonna get what you want and that's one thing I always um, struggle with is like when do we know when like to piv- to pivot yeah when do we know when to pivot yeah because it's like are you testing me universe as far as like how bad do you want it Mm -hmm. because if you don't want enough you're not you know Mm -hmm. you're not Mm -hmm. gonna pass the test you're just gonna fold and give up on it yeah so how how much do i have to um (laughs) keep going you know what i mean like how many times you gonna test me universe god dang right or or when is it a sign of like oh actually it's me being redirected okay mm-hmm. it's time to like yeah. go left or go right yeah. maybe the universe is trying to tell me to like go a different direction yeah. i always like ask myself like but i guess that's where you just have to trust your intuition you and see tr- that's, what it yeah what is being told you have to told feel to it you. out you'll always know because mm-hmm. you know if something's forced you know if something you know if you shouldn't be doing something and you're getting roadblocks you're like okay you're forcing yeah. it or you know sometimes it's just like it happens mm-hmm. and it is a redirection and sometimes you're being blocked from things you can't even see why right. you're being blocked from right so that's what i try to remind myself like for whatever reason this didn't happen like i can't even see it right now but it just wasn't in my best interest even if i don't understand it right and that's the annoying part <laughs> and, I think, and you know and but, you know you yeah know, you know and what somebody said one to me once that if it's coming from god there is no confusion or there is a sense of peace about it. Yes. And when it's coming from the other side, there is confusion. There's too many questions there, but I'm it's I just, just be not like, right. but listen, I'm a Libra and I'm, yeah. I'm always questioning everything. Yeah. Like I see 17 steps one way and I see 17 steps the other yeah. way when I have a decision to make. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know which way to go. Yeah. And it's not to say that one side is God, one side mm-hmm. is what's it called? I'm just, I'm like, am I, am I always confused? Like what's mm-hmm. going on? But like, I don't know. That's just something that I personally struggle yeah. with is making like succinct decisions yeah. and not second guessing. Mm-hmm. So I'm really trying to learn how to also trust my intuition more and more. It's gotten a lot better Mm -hmm. in the past year or two, but that's something I struggle with. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, yeah, that, that really is such a, a, um, it is, it's something to really hone in on. It's a lesson you have to work at. Mm -hmm. Um, but also just knowing that each choice is a choice each and that's choice it. Is a choice. It's not a good choice. It's not a bad choice. Right. It's only a choice of progression mm. or not, <laughs> you know, mm. like that's it. I love that. So just take the pressure off of like, if I do this, then will this happen? Because 
there's so many ways that could get you to a one point. Right. You know? Right. And if you don't like the direction that you're going in, all you have to do is change it. Change it. it. And that's it. It's that's just like it. a movie. That's you know? It. Like, if you don't like the movie, get up and go to the next theater. Write your own movie that's the it. way you want it to. And if it's, yeah, if it's not going the way you want it, just, just go somewhere else. Give it. <laughs> and that's it. I feel that like, really does take the pressure off. Yeah. I've lately have this quarantine as. Ooh, yeah. Quarantine. <laughs> this has allowed me to get so deep into mm-hmm. myself, and I'm so grateful for it. But mm-hmm. this time, this year, has allowed me to think about what things that I was telling myself I had to do or making mm-hmm. myself believe I had to do, mm-hmm. and then what do I really want to do, mm-hmm. you know? The should, could, need to. Exactly. You got rid of that. Yeah. Okay. So that You're also, doing what makes you happy now. Exactly. And it's like... I feel like we've been taking, this is a lot of, you know, issues that have been brought up by this year too, about us taking our lives so seriously Mm -hmm. and each other so seriously, not in a way that you don't care, but not taking things seriously in a way that, you know, it's already taken care of. Mm -hmm. So that's where I've been trying to come from a space of not being so hard on myself in that way of mm-hmm. taking myself so seriously mm-hmm. in that way and know that what I'm doing is enough. Like know each day that I'm waking up, that's enough. Mm-hmm. Whatever I can mm-hmm. get done in that day is enough. Amen. And it is going to get me to where I Amen. have to be. I don't have to take everything so seriously and like get in a tizzy about every little thing, you know, and like, not to say that you don't care about your life, but like literally just give up a little Mm. like give it up to god Mm. and just like take a break because it really is all gonna be okay like you are doing enough (laughs) let go and let god seriously that is that surrender because when you you have have faith you you have to trust that it will take care of itself yes because when you don't trust yourself and you don't trust what's going to happen yeah you're saying i don't trust you god exactly i I don't trust the same thing you know i don't trust the universe i don't trust what's meant for me mm-hmm. to be for me. Yeah. If you're still stressing about it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a lesson that I'm learning yeah. more and I've more been trying to work day. on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yep. definitely a big one. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> so, in your story. Yeah. <laughs> I love all these lessons where, like, I know, we just, right? Well, you have to I've get into it, though. Hopefully. You have to get into yeah. it. Yeah. And I hope everyone is, like, you know, I mean, these are just themes that I feel like if you're adulting, you you have. Oh, adulting is such a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's ghetto. <laughs> I'm I'm over it. I'm so over Somebody it. lied. Oh my god. I don't want to be an adult anymore. It sucks. <laughs> and she said it sucks. <laughs> I'm not on my mom's insurance no more. Uh, yo, I'm like 26 is a <laughs> different age. When you hit 26, a lot of things are Listen. different. 26 to 30 Ooh, is different. That, is that, that's the Saturn return. Yes. Oh, my it's, God. Yeah, I just yeah. started mine. The Saturn return, that is a time. I just got chills. So for anybody that doesn't know what the Saturn return <laughs> is, you can Google it. But Saturn return basically is um, your birthday is on Saturn. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it takes 27 years for the for Saturn to go around. 26 or 27, um, depending on when you're born right. and the time, actually. You know, 26 so. to 29 years yeah. to go around yeah. the sun. And so, like around that time and saturn is a planet that governs responsibility stability um you know anything that has to do with and, and also restrictions yes, and, and things yes, like that so yes. like uh being that planet that has to deal with that obviously is like such a such a big part of our adulting mm-hmm. life because mm-hmm. especially from 26 to 30 mm-hmm. is all the, the the time that you're figuring yourself out yeah you're now realizing what have I been doing these past 25 yeah. years of my life? I'm not enough. I'm not a kid anymore. Yeah. I'm an adult. Oh my God. Yeah. What am I going to do to set myself up for when I turn 30? What am yeah. I going to do to get ready f- to have this family yeah. that I uh, plan on having one day? Yeah. So like your mind is like warped and, and you just go through a shift of just a shift on every aspect mm-hmm. and level of your life and your being, your mm-hmm. career, your personal life, your love life. Mm-hmm. And it looks different for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a girlfriend so who, you know, she moved from New York. She cut her hair. She came to, she, she, she decided to be celibate for like three years mm-hmm. to really find herself and really understand who she was. Mm-hmm. And like at 30, she literally was like, <gasps> it felt like this big weight was lifted mm. off and she finally was like you know what everything is okay everything yeah. will take care but she literally 
broke down to break herself back up. Mm -hmm. And that is the Saturn return. And I'm going through it myself where at 27, I was like, by 30, I need to have this. I need to have my home. I need to have my husband. I need to have this. I need to have that. I'm 29 now. And I'm like, oh shit. I don't have a lot of stuff that I was like, I need to have, I need to have, yeah. I need to have. And I'm realizing it's okay. Yes. My plan was my plan, but God has other plans. Yes. And it's okay. It's okay. And I'm not behind. Yeah. I'm not, not, you yeah. know, going to be like, it's, right. it's okay. Right. And my journey is my journey is going to look different from someone who's my age doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I can't compare myself to her doing this and doing that, that has this, that has this. Yeah. Like, we're not the same people. We don't yeah. have the same purpose. Yeah. So it's going to look different for everybody. Yeah. And that's just been really freeing, but also, like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And also, um, back to the Saturn return, it's mm -hmm. just like, you're also, you've also left your the nest. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, you've also, yeah. you know, you would have le left the nest by that yeah. time. And you finally get to define who you want to be for yourself. Mm -hmm no longer being uh you know influenced by or being forced upon mm -hmm. by your parents mm -hmm. what religion to mm -hmm. to to study or, or be um to take on mm -hmm. what you know what beliefs to take on yeah. now you get to define all that for yourself you know what i mean so you really have to define who you want to be mm -hmm. for yourself mm -hmm. by yourself yeah during that age and it's a very tumultuous it experience is. it really is <laughs> to say the least but all that matters is you all so that matters is you any opinions that come from any outside sources while you know impactful and they could influence how you feel it really shouldn't steer you off of who you want to be you know so if these are opinions of like your life coming from family and friends who've like never really gone down this path and mm -hmm. don't really know what the mm -hmm. process may look like and may out of love try to get to you know get you to do something else right that doesn't matter and they could just be you know projecting, projecting their yeah or fears if it's friends that don't get it you know like nobody matters but you that's <laughs> so it as Period. long as you're happy that's all that matters and that's one thing another was like um saying i think it goes What's it called? Don't don't ask people for opinions, opinions on your ideas. Yes. Ask for feedback yes. after you've done it. Or don't ask for their opinion on things that they've never done. Mm, that too. Why are you asking people in your life what you think, you know, what the, what they would do if you, they've never done it? They've never done it. So what does it matter? You know what, what they saying? would do? Right. So then it doesn't matter. They de They don't know. It doesn't matter. So you can't you can't you know be stifled by somebody else's opinion, especially negative opinion yeah. about things that you're doing. Not even your mom or your dad. I know, and that's I, hard. That happens a lot with same you know, my, my mom, parents. Oh yeah, but it's like at the end of the day, I know who I am. Right, because they're they're saying what they know what to say because they're just trying to protect us. Yeah, they're they don't want us to obviously. Who wants to see their kids suffer or go through? Yeah. anything but at the same time it's like mom if i had listened to you yes if i had listened to yes. you i would not be where i am I'm today i'm so proud of you it's and you so know what true. i'm saying and i'm like god knew what he was doing when he took me out of that mm -hmm. situation because mm -hmm. i was raised basically i had to raise myself yeah also mm -hmm. um and i was under care of you know my yeah uh, relatives yeah, yeah. who barely took care of me and so i really did raise myself and i'm just like I'm so grateful now, though, because even though I had so much resentment for my parents for not being with them, because um, nobody will give you the same love, affection, and attention that your parents will give you. It's just going to be different. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's... Mm -hmm. There are some amazing mm -hmm. caretakers, though, who aren't mm -hmm. biological to the p kids that they're yeah. taking care of. So yeah. that's not everybody. But yeah. most of the time, no one will give you that same love that your parents, that birthed you, mm -hmm. gives you. And um, I resented them for a long time mm -hmm. because of it. But I finally, like, just really, really appreciate how God knows yeah. what he is doing. Yeah. Because had <laughs> I been under my mom uh, growing up, she's a very worrying person. She's a warrior. Yeah, same for you my know, mom. A warrior. She thinks, like, worrying is equates caring. to love. Yeah. yeah. And, like, I'm just saying this because yeah. I love you. Like, and it's like, you're putting no, fear No, you're projecting into me. fear, actually, yeah. and we're not doing that. We're not it's doing okay that. It's okay to tell your parents and that. And you're making me scared to, like, make moves. And yeah, if I no. had really, like, listened to you, yeah. I really wouldn't be where I am. Yeah. 
So you wouldn't have anything to congratulate me yeah. on because you done talked me out of everything, everything that I wanted to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it, it, that one is really tough. But like yeah. you said, like you said, yep. even for your parents. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you got to tell Especially them. if you're out of the nest and have been. Like I know you have for so many years now and yeah. me three, four years now. It's like. It's about you. Girl, I'm going to do me. At the end of the day, like what makes you happy? Right. What is making you you know, wake up in the morning yeah. and, and feel like you are thriving. Yeah. Do what makes you happy because our parents, God bless them, but yeah. they're not living our lives. They're not in our shoes. Yeah. And um, my auntie once said, she's like, or my, what was that? My brother was like, listen, they're going to grow old and die one day. Do what makes you happy. I was like, oh. <laughs> but I was like, real shit though. It's like, true. Yeah. It's like they had their chance. Now it's our chance. But yeah, sometimes when you run into that with family, it's not because they don't believe in you. Yeah. It's really just because they love you a whole yeah, they lot. they love you. And it just looks like that. And that's fine. It could look like that, but you can also keep that over there. Exactly. You can I'm also not keep that over there. You know, I'm not, you. I'm not on that vibration. Boundaries but thank you. Everything. Yeah. Everything. I have like a, a overly optimistic view of everything. I love that. And because of that, everything really always does work out for me. And I really Amen. always do get what I want. Amen. Like, I like, <laughs> and I see seriously. it. Seriously. Like, <laughs> I really was thinking about this the other day, and I'm like, you really are just supported by the universe i really am you it are really just, sometimes it like, doesn't make sense you're god's child yes. you really just are taken care of yes. no matter Everywhere. what happens like you will always get through it yeah and i, I feel like you're you're good yeah you're yeah. good i'm good yeah i love that. i'm good it's my mindset that. it's what i expect and it's also what i deserve it's mm. what we're all entitled mm. to you know we didn't just pop into this reality mm. with no resources mm. we have all the resources mm. we At need our fingertips yeah spiritually everything we have everything we need to be our fullest potential mm -hmm. reach our fullest potential and be our fullest selves but you have that choice of free will of whether or not you want to tap into those resources or not mm -hmm. and it really just begins on your ideas about yourself mm -hmm. and what you feel like you deserve because mm -hmm. if you can't even give it to yourself you know you're not going to be accepting of it when it comes your way and you're definitely not gonna be able to give it to anybody else mm. so i really have to accept all of this support so that i can mm. be in a position to give it back to somebody because mm. it's like equal exchange mm -hmm. so i know what i want to the lifestyle that i want to live and i know the way that i want to help people but we're all a reflection of each other so for me to help other people i need to help myself mm, i need right. to put myself first right because mm, i could never get to where i'm going to make an impactful impression on the world if i'm not helping myself first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how can you fill other people's cup with an empty yeah. vessel I have to fill my cup in order to fill your cup. Absolutely. Sure. So it always goes and it's not back selfish. to putting yourself first because putting yourself first is putting God first. Mm. And that's on period. Mm. <laughs> putting yourself first is putting God first. Yes. I if you that. think about it, there's yeah. no separation. That's true. Why would you not, why, why would you not want yourself to have the best life you could have possible and expect it? Mm. Because that's what God expects for you. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference? Mm. That's why putting yourself first means the same thing to me, at least. No, I love that. that yeah. I love that. So that way you never have the ego tricking you into thinking it is selfish and to thinking, oh, you want too much or, oh, you think you're too good for this mm. and, oh, you're not good enough for this. No, none of that is true. That is so <laughs> such an ego thing. Yeah. When you feel like undeserving. Yeah. Or you imposter feel like syndrome is real. I'm not want like I, I don't deserve something. Yeah. Imposter syndrome. Man. But it's like what's different between you and the people that you see that want what you have? Nothing. 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 Literally nothing. Nothing. You okay. both have the same blood. You both have the same skin. Mm. You both have you both came out of a mom. Mm. You both got here the same way. And we all live under these rules and realities that keep us into this construct of society mm -hmm. there's nothing different there's nothing different uh, granted we are born in two different circumstances, circumstances that is you a good me? point that For is sure. a good point there are different circumstances and of course people are born into different 
reality. Right. But, but what I'm saying is there's nothing that your separates power, us. Exactly. Your power to attract what you want is no different than theirs. Yes. And it's no more powerful just because someone was born mm. in a different reality. Amen. That it's may no have more set powerful. Them. Yeah. Just the because same. they were, it is the same. Yeah. The same power that is in them is yeah. the same power that is in you. Yeah. If anything, you may even have a more, more power just because yeah. you have more wants mm-hmm. for it or more desire. <clears throat> right. You feel me? If they already have what they want, you know, they're, they might be chilling. But, like, when you have mm-hmm. that desire, you can will into existence that life that you want, mm-hmm. especially when you feel deserving mm-hmm. of it. Yes. That is real. Yes. That is so real. Yeah. Mm. Girl, you... I mean, every time we talk, I'm like, ooh. Yeah. Yes. I'm happy this time it's recorded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. true, true. We have so many of these conversations. It's always just like... Yeah, because you just got to break it down. It's you just really have to simple. break it down. And like just just having that little switch, mm-hmm. that little switch or perspective or mindset mm-hmm. can change your life. It's true. You feel me? And it's I see true. how you operate in the world, and I mm-hmm. love that. And I, I, I want more of that because mm-hmm. I'm very confident in knowing mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm special and I'm taken care yeah. of and, and God is with me. He's in me mm-hmm. and, and I am okay, mm-hmm. but I can't help. No one can help, yeah. but feel fearful of and course. scared and have anxiety. Of course. And I realize my ego has tricked me too much into yes. believing that side of yes. things too much yeah. for too long, mm-hmm. you know, two years. Oh, my little puppy is, um, she's up. She's been laying on my lap. Um, it's been two years of that Mm -hmm. and I refuse to good stay there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's 2021 in like a few days, seven days, actually seven days, exactly seven days. And I refuse (laughs) to remain in that mode of thinking and being, yeah, it's time to elevate and ascend Mm -hmm. and be all of me because it's eating me up inside that i'm not doing all of that Mm -hmm. that i know i can do absolutely be all that i can be yeah i was having a conversation about anxiety the other day with a friend of mine who suffers from anxiety and i asked her you know like what are you afraid of and she listed all these things and i'm like well have any of those ever happened and Mm. she said no so i feel like for me the way i deal with anxiety or deal with fear in general is to literally think about what's the worst that can happen Mm. and just really go through that and Mm. like make peace with that. Right. Because when you think about the worst that can happen, it never really happens. Right. Okay. Someone says no. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Or if it does happen, at least you've prepped yourself for it in in some type of way. And just also knowing that like, it's also okay if right. that happens. It's okay. It's okay. No matter what back. happens, it's okay. Yeah. You'll be fine. So just get over your fear of like what you think couldn't happen because a lot of that time, a lot of times that stuff never happens. And that's all to do like for me, at least all of that, my fears and anxieties are like, what if I don't do this right? What if the yeah. business idea that I'm wanting to work on is not no. going to be successful or da, da, da. And it's just like, no. Okay, just do yeah. it. And the way I live my life is also there is no alternative. Mm. Like, I don't give myself, for instance, mm-hmm. when I moved to New York, mm-hmm. I didn't have a plan. Right. But I knew I was supposed to be there. Right. So it didn't really matter. Boom. You know? So my mom was like, well, oh, well, what what's going to do mm-hmm. if this doesn't happen? What if you're on this journey and it doesn't turn out to be what you want it to be. And I said, that's not going to happen. Right, right. Because this is going to work. mm, This this is what I'm doing. mm, This mm. is what I'm doing. I don't have a plan B. I don't have another plan. Because if I need another plan, another plan will come to me in that moment. And it will present itself. Me setting myself up to have a backup plan is setting myself up for failure. Mm. So I never go into anything having any type of backup mm. plan. And I know that may sound crazy to a lot of earth signs <laughs> out there, but it's, trust me, it's <laughs> you fine. You earth signs are just too, me, much too trust practical. Me, I, there's a balance <laughs> between what I'm saying of planning and not right, planning. Right. But That's true. In the mindset of success, you can only know success. Amen. You you can't know, oh, well, what if they don't? Right. No, that's not going to happen because right. they are going to like it. Because If I'm you're shit. saying this is what, mm, like, I, okay. they are going to like it. There, the there's no way that you're not going to like it because that's how good I am and that's how much I'm worth. And that's mm. really what I feel about myself. Yes. And I feel like that's why my life is like this. Right. So that's also another way that I combat, you know, anxiety or anything, mm-hmm. because it's like, who's telling you these fears? It's definitely not your God voice. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Unless you're not. putting yourself into danger. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. that's intuition and that's different. Right. And that's not going to trick you. Mm-hmm. And that's not going to condemn you. And mm-hmm. that's not going to make you feel icky about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. There's a difference. So you have to learn the difference in, you know, that comes to listening to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Intuition yeah. and and, um, and your ego, and anxiety, yeah, mm. and anxiety, okay. exactly, because those are very different things. Mm. That is so. Ooh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to like listen to this back break and meditate down. on it, yeah, and break it down, down, because yeah. this is just just so much, so many gems. You are dropping so many gems. Thank you so and much. And that's some real, real shit. I just really hope that like. I know that, you know, according to my mom, I'm like really free spirited. I just really hope that people see that example mm-hmm. in me mm-hmm. and just realize like they can do it too. Yeah. And it all turns out to be it okay. It all turns out to be okay. It really turns I mean, out to be okay. you definitely taught me that. Like it will be okay. Yeah. Like, it's all it's right. Fine. It's fine. <laughs> and it's, it's fine, fine. And it turns out to be okay because I think it's fine. Yeah. And, it, and I think it's and it okay. And it will be. And it always does. And especially during this time. Like, yeah. We need this mindset more than ever. Yeah. Like. Yes, people have experienced deaths mm-hmm. and, and losses in business and all these kinds of, you know, just not so great things this year. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not to say that at the end of the day, everything mm-hmm. was supposed to happen the way that it happened. Or else it wouldn't have. Exactly, period. period. And, you know, sadly, yeah, it, 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 we all experienced some negative things, but it is what it is. And we're going to be okay. Yeah. We're going to get through this. And if you made it <laughs> through 2020 alive with yeah. your head on straight and able to wish for a new day, now's mm-hmm. the time to embark on it with a new mindset, a new, you know, just mm-hmm. just energy about things mm-hmm. and just know that it will be okay. Exactly. You know? And it's like, if this year didn't do anything for you, I hope it just gave you the drive to hope for something better. That's it. And that is enough to absolutely change your life. Amen. That's it. <laughs> so I just want to say, like, well, with all this, you obviously have your um, company and collective that yeah. you are working on, Chrysalis. Yes. So tell Chrysalis. us about that and how, like, everything that we just talked about yes. goes into the work that you're doing. Because, yes. like, you're not... She's not just talking about it. About no, it, okay? yeah, this she, is my lifestyle. This is her, it's a lifestyle. Her work. This it's is what work. she does. You know, this is what she does. She helps a lot of amazing people just to like, Thank yeah, you. change their mindset. So tell us about that. Yes. So Chrysalis Transformative Healing is my um, Reiki practice. And yeah, I'm a Reiki practitioner and people come to me all the time for um spiritual attunement um so reiki is just an ancient practice of energy healing and cleansing and balancing so when clients come to me they come for those purposes and from working with reiki we can help them get through a lot of emotional trauma and some things that have been locked away that they might not have remembered that have been locked away reiki is good for bringing that up um, yeah, and it also can be used in spaces. It's also used in hospitals. Um, so you can use it in that setting. I used to use it with my kids that I used to work with a lot when I was nannying. Um, yeah, and you can cleanse homes with it. It's it's a great practice. So that's been in my life. Reiki has been a part of my life for the past four or five years, and I've been practicing for about a year now. Yeah. And like, what is the process of practicing Reiki? Mm -hmm. Um, You have to be attuned by a Reiki master. So there's three levels to Reiki. And the third level is the master level. And from that level, you can attune other people. And attunement just means basically you being kind of like, I'm not a priest, but kind of, you know, like when you become a priest, they attune you to this certain vibration that you'll be able to do priestly things. So Reiki is kind of the same way where you get attuned How to the tune? energy. They like so just the, yeah, it's like basically like they pass along the energy of Reiki okay. to you. Oh, okay. And that way you can channel it and oh. use it on other people. And can that can only happen from me? a master. I'm not a master yet, but when I become a master, yes. Oh. Yeah, you have How, to become what? a master. So you have to become a master? Yeah, and it's three levels to it. How do you mm-hmm. even do that? It's a lot of studying. It's, yeah, each level is... a a pretty big deal honestly you have to study and you have to take basically hours with your master learning how to 
do Do this practice so you're learning how to channel energy and and they teach you how to okay yeah they teach you how to use it on other people that's a monk level stuff yeah so it's level one two and three wow and how long does it take do you know um to like it depends on the teacher it each level could take anywhere from a few days to i've i've even heard some master level programs lasting like up to a few months oh yeah or even like half of a year Mm -hmm. so i think it depends on where you go okay how that person chooses to teach it interesting Mm -hmm. that is so yeah that's a whole nother world yeah (laughs) that is so so interesting yeah so reiki attunement yes and then you're able to then like um heal people once you have yeah i don't like saying that i heal people okay but it is true i'm gonna There's say healing i'm in gonna there. say yeah the reason why okay. i'm saying that i don't feel comfortable saying that i heal right, people right. is because it's not some jesus level stuff. exactly yeah well it is okay but what i'm saying is when you receive reiki you receive the tools to heal yourself oh i see okay so much like jesus did say like the miracles that i do you'll be able to do and greater mm. he did actually use a form of reiki yeah, which was yeah. just hands-on healing yeah, hands-on yeah. touch healing that's yeah. what reiki is yeah. and so um it is the same right but i'm not out here saying i'm jesus right right but i do want people to realize that yes i administer the healing but it's up to the person to receive because it you can and be to, my client for mm. years it's just like therapy you mm-hmm. can go to therapy for years and still not mm. be healed right because right. it's your choice to heal mm. you can come to me as a reiki um practitioner for years but if you don't choose to heal mm. what i'm illuminating or mm. show you what you need to heal mm. you're not going to be healed so I'm not healing people. People are healing themselves, and I'm helping them. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And that's what therapy is, too. Like, yeah. I'm going to help you. I'm yeah. going to hold your hand through yeah. this process. But I can't but make I can't, you do it. That's it. I can't, you can't make, make you do it. I can bring anything. you to the water, but yeah. I can't make you drink it. I can't make it. you drink. That's it. If you're going to die of starvation, I mean, of thirst, you're going right. to do it. Because I can't make you do it. And that's what therapy, all of this exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. so I think a lot empowering. of people go to these, mm-hmm. you know, um, um, different practitioners, whether yeah. therapists yeah. or psychiatrists or yeah. Reiki or spiritual healer, mm-hmm. and they just expect like, okay, I'm you're going to heal me. Right. Yeah, so I no, never tell I anyone I'm going to heal you. Yeah, I'm not going to heal you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to help you heal yourself. That's it. Because it's not my to responsibility water. to heal you just because I have this service. You have to be willing to do it for yourself. Right. And I'm going right. to hold you up in love and hold the space for you. But if you don't heal, that's not on me mm, yeah and that's it yeah <laughs> listen it's 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 love that's it's real love, love. That's it's, love i can't enable anyone you know that's it so mm. yeah so thank you i think chrysalis <laughs> is amazing and thank you guys you. need to check her out on instagram the instagram is chrysalis nyc yep. oops chrysalis nyc mm-hmm. yes and then our um the website is chrysalis nyc.com that's beautiful yes well, honestly, we had such a beautiful, beautiful conversation that is helping me just, I, I literally, I'm not kidding, like, I want to listen back to this and, like, meditate Yay. on certain things because it's a very transformative time that we're going yes. through. We're in the age of Aquarius I now. Know, it's so crazy. And just, you know, Anything is possible, though. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. The next 10 years could absolutely change the whole trajectory of your listen, experience. I see people, like, literally within a year, yes. their whole lives are being changed yes. from how baby yeah. to marriage yeah. to home and new job yeah. all within one year like one of my girlfriends literally called me and she's like oh my god i'm pregnant she just had she had, i just got oh back from dc gosh. from her wedding a oh, few months wow. ago and she's pregnant and she said the doctor was like the co- conception happened like five days after the wedding and now they're um they were like oh we don't need to look for a house just yet let's wait and her husband's like i mean let's just look at it they end up putting a ho- down oh payment on the god, house that's now amazing you know what i'm saying now yeah. the house is being built and then she has a job coming i was like wow oh, wow and that's just one example of like the the yeah. the little i mean yeah. quantum leaps quantum i guess leaps. that people are experiencing in light their speed. lives mm-hmm. like light speed yeah. of just boom 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 yeah. once you set your intention yeah. and you manifest it it yeah. is possible anything that you want is possible it's for so you true. and i pray that everyone of you listening and watching have victory over your circumstance because it is temporary yeah but your purpose is not amen so you continue to work on your purpose or or find your purpose and know that anything that you want to achieve anything that you want for yourself you deserve and you are going to have it if you want it 
okay so seek out the um the help that you need yeah. but it's up to you to drink the water yeah and i hope you drink <laughs> yeah so i hope you enjoy listening to <laughs> us and listening to the voc podcast Thank you so much, Thank Malia, for, for coming me. today and talking with us. Thank you. I learned so much from you. Yay. And you guys can follow her at? Malia P, M-A-A-L-I-Y-A-H-P. And then yes. you can find all of my information from there. Boom. So, and obviously you can follow me at Mame J M A M E A D J E I on Instagram and Twitter. And obviously watch the videos. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching.